This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Hey guys, Big Paul here. Um, I thought with all the bodybuilders falling over dead from heart attacks lately, it might be appropriate to talk about cardiovascular health and what causes high blood pressure in bodybuilders and why it, it probably is the most important health attribute to manage and likely the easiest. That's the thing that's the most perplexing about this is that most bodybuilders pay zero attention to their blood pressure and it is probably the single easiest thing that you can do to prevent long-term poor outcomes from cardiovascular disease. It's not to say that it eliminates risk entirely, but I would say not managing your blood pressure, not taking proactive measures, prophylactic measures using ARBs or ACE inhibitors to uh, reduce blood pressure is analogous to not wearing a helmet, riding a motorcycle, and then wondering why you die when you have an accident fall over, crack your head open. Um, it's the same thing with, with bodybuilding. It's so easy to manage and yet so few bodybuilders do it. All right. So we're going to dig into it. So what, you know, the, the, the question, and I, if, I don't think many people understand this is why and how steroids cause high blood pressure. Guys don't have a basic understanding of the physiology that's going on here. And, what, what happens is large, you know, studies have found this, that large doses of AASs cause extra activation of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, commonly known as the RAS system. And we'll, we'll talk about the RAS system here in a second. But what the RAS system does is, in, in, at a high level, is regulate blood pressure in the body. 17 um, alpha alkylated steroids, oral steroids, seem to cause even worse problems and even worse stimulation. And um, in studies have been shown to e increase left ventricular hypertrophy more than injectable steroids. Um, they also skew lipids. So this is why I tell guys, don't fucking take orals. There's really no good reason to pound orals year round there there's very little additional benefit to doing it and it's it they 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 come with little to extra no extra benefit in all the poor outcomes and increased risk that that um you don't need i mean there's just you know there are times that you want to deploy orals and you know contest prep and you know there, there are specific body composition needs maybe peaking for a powerlifting competition, but th that is a very limited thing. People that pound orals year round are really rolling the dice. Um, there is a correlation, a direct correlation studies have found between high aldosterone levels and left ventricular hypertrophy in a large heart. You know, you hear of guys like Dallas McCarver had an enlarged heart. A lot of these guys that die, you know, they're called an athlete's heart, but a, a lot of Bodybuilders have extremely enlarged hearts. I, I think I saw uh, Jamie the Giant recently post a video about how his heart is extremely large. And my guess would be that he's probably done very little to manage his blood pressure. He probably has been pounding orals year round. He's probably doing shit like Trin. Um, that is very, very toxic. That, that would be my guess. Um, and it's going to catch up with him at some point. Um Studies have proven that the in, that the increased stimulation of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone sy uh, system plays a role in the pathogenesis of cardiological disease. It, it increases the odds of cardiac infraction, infarctions, uh, otherwise known as a heart attack, um, arterial hi hyper hypertension, high blood pressure, circulatory failure. Um, you know, the situation that happened with, um, with, uh, Boston Lloyd recently, um, uh, where he had an aortic dissection that, that, that usually is, is a result of, um, long-term extended high blood pressure that was uncontrolled in, in the arterial wall just gives out at some point. Now that's not to say there weren't, weren't other factors in their genetics may have had to play in it, but certainly it doesn't help things. 
The overactivation studies were shown of the RAAS system is the primary factor. This is what a study said. Primary factor in the changes in cardiovascular, negative changes in the cardiovascular system observed in AAS users. So, um, you know, um, managing the stimulation of the RAAS system is probably the single most important thing that you can do to protect your cardiovascular health. So what is the RAAS system, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system? The RAS system regulates blood pressure in your body, um, regulates aldosterone, which regulates water retention, um, um, it regulates vasoconstriction, uh, which is when arteries tighten in, uh, tighten up to increase blood pressure, and the stimula stimulation of angiotensin um, one, which leads to angiotensin two, which um, you know creates the whole cycle um, uh, of of increased aldosterone production in um, vasoconstriction. So, how the RAS works. Um, all right, so really the RAS system is, is a protective system that is in your body to protect you from low blood pressure. And, and you know, we're, we, the environment that we live in, the foods that we eat now, the hormones that we get, uh, the, our body really isn't exposed to hypotension as it may have been in the wild. You know, blood loss, situations like that, or, or electrolyte imbalances where you need to increase blood pressure. So this is the body's regulatory system for blood pressure. Uh, the blood pressure drops, uh, the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated. Um, this stimulates the JG cells in the kidneys, which release renin. Um, renin is released by the kidneys. Um, and then renin, um, angiotensin, it, it stimulates, it activates a substance in the liver called, um, angiotensinogen, um, which then creates angiotensin 1. ACE, which is angiotensin converting enzyme, converts, it's made in the uh, lung and kidney endothelium, primarily the lungs, converts angiotensin uh, 1 to angiotensin 2, which um, stimulates aldosterone production and then um, causes vasoconstriction, um, and, uh, increased blood volume, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, you, you'll see, you'll, you, you, everybody's heard of ACE inhibitors like lisinopril, which prevent the production of the enzyme in the lungs. Um, the, uh, angiotensin two binds to the ATR1 receptors and stimulates the kidneys to conserve water and sodium. Um, it also causes the kidneys to excrete potassium into the blood Stimulates the pituitary gland to release um, anti-diuretic hormone um, known as vasopressin. And so the kidneys retain water and you get into this, 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 this loop of where your, your body, uh, your, your blood, blood vessels are constricted. Your body retains more water in, in the, in, and then blood pressure increases. Um, as blood pressure increases, it causes more tension on the arteries and on the heart. And um, it seems that androgens or anabolic steroids stimulate the system to be overactive. Um, so we want to limit the activity of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system if we want to protect our cardiovascular health. So how to manage the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, RAS? Two classes of drugs primarily manage this system, and that would be ACE inhibitors, uh, which block the production of the ACE enzyme in the lungs. Um, you can easily identify a, uh, um, ACE inhibitors. Uh, there are drugs that end in pril. Lisinopril would be an example. Um, uh, one, one of the side effects the, that uh, I get and a lot of people get from ACE inhibitors, which is annoying, is the dry cough. And um, ACE breaks down bradykinin in the lungs, and ACE inhibitors, since they inhibit the enzyme, 
um, um, cause the cause bradykinin to build up and too much bradykinin in the lungs causes a dry cough and kind of shortness of breath. ARBs, on the other hand, block the angiotensinin um, two receptors on the kidney. Um, these are drugs that are easily um, identified in, in sartan. So you have losartan, valsartan, telmosartan. Um, the, the, these are the ACE inhibitors. So, so uh, a way to think of it is um, the renin angiotensin system version of um, ACE, uh, ACE inhibitors are sort of like an aromatase inhibitor. It in, in, um, inhibits an enzyme that converts, um, and the ARB sort of works like um, tamoxifen would um, with 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 um, estrogen, where it blocks the receptor. Um, different different system, so I don't want to confuse you. But um, the um, ARBs do block the angiotensin um, to receptor on the kidney, which prevents aldosterone production. At the end of the day, both of these lower blood pressure um, and, and prevent the stimulation of overstimulation of the RAS system. So benefits of an ACE inhibitor in ARBs uh, reduces hypertension. That's, that's an obvious one. Um, you are going to lower your blood pressure. Lower blood pressure means less risk of heart attack, stroke, um, um, is some sort of sudden, you know, um, aneurysm or like, uh, what, um, what Boston Lloyd had, uh, a, a aortic dissection, something like that. Um, it also, they also are kidney protective. They protect kidneys, which is another thing that seems to kill bodybuilders. We don't hear about a lot, but a lot of bodybuilders end up in some state of kidney failure from unmanaged high blood pressure and also from basically turning into type two diabetics. Um, uh, um, they also seem to prevent left ventricular hypertrophy, enlargement of the heart. Um, they, an added benefit a lot of people don't realize is they reduce, uh, water retention from andrea, androgen stimulated aldosterone production. So you see a lot of guys that use dry compounds like, um, anadrop and they get bloated on it, but, uh, it, you know, they, they think it's estrogen, but it's not actually the estrogen. It's the androgens stimulating the, um, RAS system and, and increased aldosterone production leads to bloating. Um, ARB, uh, ARBs seem to have specific benefits. Um, you know, a lot of people, the ARBs have gotten a lot of popularity lately and have some specific benefits that don't, ACE inhibitors don't seem to have. Um, uh, some, some ones that seem to be unique to ARBs is that they do um, seem to lower uh, hemoglobin A1C. Um, they, and they have a partial PPARY agonist activity, specifically telmosartan, which prevents metabolic disorders, seems to prevent mal metabolic disorders. Um, uh, telmosartan is superior to other ARBs in reducing fasted glucose and increasing adeno, uh, adiponectin, uh, levels, um, as well. Um, they also lower hematocrit and hemoglobin. I didn't consider this when I, you know, I, I've told people I take, when I take equipoise, I do not get the issues with hematocrit that a lot of guys get, but I have always run an ARB. I have for years. Um, um, I recently switched to telmosartan, but I have been running valsartan for years and maybe, maybe just maybe. The reason why my hematocrit and hemoglobin never get really high is because of the ARBs that I have been running. Um, studies suggest that ARBs may be superior to other antihypertensives in reducing the risk of Alzheimer's or preventing cognitive dise diseases, which is also important for bodybuilders. Um, you know, it seems that um, anabolic androgenic steroids do cause increased risk of um, cognitive diseases. Uh, Losartan has uh, something to keep in mind. Losartan has been shown to be less effective at lowering blood pressure than Telmosartan. Um, Telmosartan has the longest half-life of all the ARBs, which is 24 hours. Telmosartan does seem to be superior to the other ARBs for bodybuilding purposes. Um, because of some of the additional side benefits that it does have, but really any of them will work, um, 
for lowering blood pressure and helping prevent cardiovascular health. But it seems to be, anecdotally, right now that um, telmosartan seems to be the best choice. Um, guys, that's really all I have on this today. Um, I, I, you know, I can't stress this enough, and this is this is something I, 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 I keep pounding home with people that I coach, people that I work with, is you have got to protect your cardiovascular health. We look at all the bodybuilders that have died over the last year. Um, Sean Roden, um, George Peterson, um, you, you know, you, you have re re recently, uh, you know, you know, just all these dudes, you know, um, um, you know, that have died recently, it's been, because it's been cardiovascular events. They've had heart attacks. And my guess would be is that these guys probably were pounding orals. Um, they probably never managed their blood pressure proactively. Um, they didn't keep on top of their cardiovascular health and then they paid the price for it. And the, and the thing with cardiovascular health is you don't notice there's a problem until it's too late. Um, they call high blood pressure the silent killer. Um, and they call it the silent killer for a reason because people don't realize it's a problem until it's too late. Take it seriously. Um, keep an eye on it. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. Hopefully you find this helpful. If you have comments, please leave them in the comment section. I'll do my best to e answer each and every one of them. Take care.